I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really happy today to introduce to you Elena Snelton, a delightful young lady and a terrific story. In fact, I think some of our, much of our story is very similar. Sounds like you were from Pioneer Stock and was, from the LDS yeah. Church. Tell it, where were you born? I was born and raised in Provo, Utah, right where in the middle are? of the bubble. <laughs> All right, <laughs> right in Utah County, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. You went to school there and everything. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Your folks in the church, I guess. You're born, yes. born in the yeah, church. Born and, and raised in the church. My said, dad's side of the family were, like I said, Pioneer pioneers. Stock. My my maternal grandmother was a Harris. And oh yeah. And, oh, wow. A and, Harris. Uh -huh, <laughs> on my grandfather's side, they came over from England. So there's yeah. some converts that came over from, from wow. England. So. Okay. Yeah. So kind of like it, me, too. It just that was all we knew, right? As yeah. Growing yeah. up, go to primary. And <laughs> yeah, I didn't think anything too tremendously different. Um, yeah. That was the only world I'd ever been exposed to. And yeah. And did you uh, uh, go to seminary? and? Mm -hmm. I went to private school growing up, and so it was a non-denominational Christian school. Really? So we did have Bible study in the morning. Um, however, we never really got too far into uh, Exodus by the time the end of the school year went. Really? Um, now, was that so, your folks' choice, I guess? That was. Uh, that was. And what was the, just to keep, so you weren't in public schools? Mm -hmm. or I, was, mm -hmm. I didn't even know they had yeah, they did. that yeah. kind of school in No, they did. Provo. No, they had yeah. a couple of them. They yeah. had a couple of them. And so um, I did the private school thing until junior high. And then uh, oh, and then you went to... And then I went to junior high in eighth grade. It was my first mm -hmm. year in a public school. And that was <laughs> a little eye-opening because I had been so sheltered. But, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I guess that would be. So um, growing up, I mean, going to young women's, I guess, and do mm -hmm. the... My family wasn't too terribly active as a small child. Um, Growing up, uh, we would go to church here and there. But then out of the blue one day, my father got called into an BYU bishopric. Oh and <laughs> I was um, small enough at the time that I didn't quite understand what that was. And, yeah. and he was in the state presidency. And then he ended up getting called to uh, be in a BYU bishopric. And that's when we that's, started is becoming... Is that a singles ward yes, kind of a yes. situation? Yeah. Yes, a singles ward at BYU. And so that's when we started becoming more active. Uh -huh. I didn't really enjoy primary too much. Um, <laughs> I didn't like the other children involved. And so typically we'd go to church with dad up at BYU. Oh, and yeah. um, we did that for a couple of years. Huh. Um, but then he ended up leaving that calling because of some doctrinal conflicts he kind of felt was going on up there. Um, really? Some, some of the Anything specific? Or morality type remember? of issues. Oh. I remember as I as I got older and I started asking questions about, Daddy, why did you end up leaving? And and um, a, a lot of morality issues. He was saying that, you know, they teach one thing but kind of turn a cheek to the other. And he didn't like that. And so he stepped oh. down from that, actually. Wow, My dad was always kind of a rebel. <laughs> and then after his passing, um, I was looking through a lot of his, his books. And a lot of his books, mm -hmm. he had annotate in the margins some, some of his thoughts and his notes. And I could kind of see him. Kind of questioning along the way too, but really, yeah. But he's did passed that now. Add so, to you? oh, did that add to your journey then? You, it did how, not. How I old were you when you looked at those things? I uh, this was just more recently, probably within the last four or five years. It was oh. after I'd already left the church that okay. I started um, going through my dad's books. But you sensed then that he. But was, then, seeing yeah. and looking back, and, and mom was she. Um, my mom has always had a testimony, however not that active. She never went through the temple again um, until my brother needed to go through the temple to get his endowments out for his mission. Oh. And um, I remember her coming home from that, and at this time I was a teenager, and she said, you know, it's changed, so it's, it's not as odd as I remember. <laughs> but she hadn't gone through, the last time she had gone through, from my recollection, 
recollection of her telling me was was when she married my father, oh. and she never went through again because she was too uncomfortable with it. And that was before 1990 when they made all the changes, Correct. probably. Correct. Yeah. yeah, and so I thought that was always interesting. So that was one of those little things in the back of my head that I kind of had on the shelf, the proverbial <laughs> shelf, going, yeah. huh, you know. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So, uh, so what happens after school? Yeah. Oh, geez. Um, so high school, I was very active in the church and in the youth programs okay. in high school. Yeah. I attended, um, by this time my parents had divorced, so I attended both my mom's and my father's ward. Oh, and wow. I was active in both. I just kind of decide which one I wanted to go to that week yeah. kind of thing. Um, went to seminary. Uh, I always had a lot of questions. And a lot of them were always just kind of tabled or shelved or, or you don't need to know that just stuff? yet. What yes. kind of questions were they? Um, a lot of basic stuff like, well, who wrote this book? Who wrote Galatians? Yeah. Why do I need to know um, about Emma Smith and that's it? Because I thought he practiced, practiced polygamy. I thought it wasn't a rumor, but is that true? You know, a lot of things were always just kind of shuffled off yeah, to the side. Or like we don't need to know that right today. now. or. <laughs> Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And um, I'm always kind of a, a intuitive or an investigative type of girl, and yeah. I want to know the answers. Yeah. I'm a very forthright and, and <laughs> kind of in-your-face kind of girl. And um, so if you're going to start deferring questions like that, I kind of want to know why. It does seem odd, does it? It's odd. Yeah. yeah, so so why are we yeah. not addressing you this used the word, kind of thing? You used the word to me earlier, uh, shushed. Oh, yes, yeah. I was shushed all the time. <laughs> shushed. That's for later. And like, <laughs> don't ask those questions, and it's not... Is, did they ever say it wasn't important to your salvation kind of thing? Or you oh, really yes, actually, that? yes, now that I think about it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I had that in high school and seminary, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Interesting. Yeah, and then after um, high school, I enlisted in the military um, in the Utah National Guard and, oh. and served with them for seven, almost eight years. Wow. And, and that just local then? And, uh -huh, and, just local. I was active yeah. duty with them for quite a bit. And wow. then um, I married my first husband. Um, I met him when I was 17 oh, at youth at conference. School? Oh, at youth conference. At youth conference. It was my oh. last youth conference. <laughs> yeah. Um, we went to Camp Williams, and he yeah. was up there working that day, and that's how our paths crossed. And wow. we started dating right after he high school. He was a return missionary, wasn't mm -hmm. he? And, he was yeah. a return missionary. and oh. You get married in the temple. And we got married in the temple oh, after I got home from basic training and yeah. my advanced training. What yeah. did you think of the temple then? Um, so his, his mother, my, my um, first mother-in-law, she kind of laid the groundwork for me. She kind of prepared me. She did? She did. Told um, stuff? She told me stuff, probably <laughs> that she ought not, however. Um, she said, no, don't worry about everybody's wearing funny-looking clothes and the boys are wearing baker's hats. Um, and if baker's they touch you someplace odd, don't think anything of it. It only happens once. And so, <laughs> yeah. what on earth am I getting myself into? But you know, that's all I knew. That was the tradition. Yeah, that's just and what you, you just do. assume all your loved ones have been through it, and, and you just understand it later. Or right. Something. Well, my brother yeah. explained it to me because my brother and his wife were married for a few years before I went through, and the way they explained it to me was, this is the way it's been done in other worlds for eons, for you know, <laughs> ever and ever and ever. Yeah. So, that's that's just it's the way just it, the way it, it is. is. That's but... just how God <laughs> has planned it, and that's why it makes sense. Yeah. So. You know. So you go on and get married and have children, yeah, I guess? We went, and, yeah, we got married in the temple, and we waited yeah. a few years to have children. I wanted to finish school, and yeah. I was working active duty with, with the National Guard at that time and, and um, just wanted to kind of finish growing up first. Yeah. I felt like I wasn't old enough to get married, let alone have kids, <laughs> getting married at 19. So we waited a few minutes. Yeah. Um, but then we had our first one when I was 23. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just active in the church, I guess, both of you? And mm hmm um, I kind of started questioning in my early 20s when, um, after I had my first child, and I kind of stepped away from the church for a little bit. What were you questioning then? Um, it was more of a sense of, of young rebellion. <laughs> really? Uh, uh, my husband was much older than I was and um, quite controlling, mm -hmm. and um, he was deployed quite a bit at that time, and so I started hanging oh. out with other people, and I felt like I wanted to recapture some youth that I had lost getting married young. Yeah. And I started going down a path I didn't want to go down. Hmm. Um, but thanks to God and um, bishops involved, I, I woke up and just snapped myself out of it and just yeah. needed some help getting back on the straight and narrow path. And, yeah. and then, um, and my husband was very supportive at the time because he wanted to stay married and raise the eternal <laughs> family. And, sure. and right after that, I was a very extremely 
staunch and um, orthodox good Mormon girl good for Mormon girl. a good decade. Well, looking back on that, do you, do you feel like you had a testimony of Joseph Smith no. in the Book of Mormon? I never did. Oh. Have you I never read did. it? Did I did. Know? I've read the Book of Mormon. Um, and you prayed about it, I guess? Did yes, <laughs> but it wasn't the prayer that we were taught to pray about it. Oh. Um, it wasn't the, dear Heavenly Father, show me that <laughs> the words here in the Book of Mormon are true. You know, because there are truths sprinkled in it, and I think that's why um, it is so seductive, is because, it, you know, Satan yeah, it likes to sprinkle truth to get you to swallow one jihugic lie, you know, yeah, exactly. um, but I never, I never had that burning in the bosom. I never had that steadfast testimony of Joseph Smith oh. or of, of the Book of Mormon. And because of that, I always felt like something's wrong with me. I obviously haven't repented of all my sins enough to be able to have that confirmation <laughs> or, or what have you. I always, Did you ever think God doesn't love you? Was that ever a I would not directly, but I always questioned if he if he really was there for me. Yeah. Because when you've been indoctrinated your whole life that you're his child, he loves you no matter what. But you got to do this and this and this and this and this and this and this to right. obtain that love right. and that that Very acceptance. Conditional. Very conditional. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I I always knew that he loved me because I was told, but mm -hmm. I never had that knowledge for myself. No, not to belabor it, but did you ever bear your testimony, either at fast and testimony meetings? I know you went to youth conferences mm -hmm. and that kind of I stuff. I did, but you? I always went back and was centered around Jesus. Was it, really? Mm -hmm. I would... So what did you think of him at this point then? Jesus to me back then was my big brother <laughs> who I needed to emulate and try to, um, try to follow. Yeah. Um, he was so high up on a pedestal that he wasn't attainable though. Um, I, I didn't ever know that you could have a relationship. Having a relationship with Jesus, I mean, we who just does don't, that? We don't what? say that. No, really. we don't. Yeah. As in the Mormon world, you don't, you don't say, well, you don't have that delineation between having a relationship with Christ versus, um, I think we're just so encumbered by the religiosity of it, um, by the laws yeah. that are yeah. delegated to it, they're delegated right. to us that we're just expected to follow, that yeah. we get so wrapped up in the list of things that you have to do yeah. that you don't realize that you're losing the I think that's a good way to goal. say it. The church is there, the bishops are there, the mm -hmm. temple's there, families are forever is there. It just kind of all, Jesus kind of gets, I don't know where he's at exactly. Well, and that's I the know other in thing. the temple he's just not, yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, just the, that's the other thing, too, now that you mentioned it, that the whole family is forever thing. Yeah. I feel like like a lot of members in the church are so engrossed with that concept as family is forever that... That's almost their that's God. That's their God. That's they're their they're idol. Yeah. Attaining the ultimate family, and God forbid a black sheep like me should leave the church because then they're standing in their friends and their peers' eyes are, well, something must have happened because that... <laughs> Sister Relief Society ladies family member over there just dropped off the planet. Yeah, you know, so interesting. That that that's always kind of <laughs> been odd to me that you need to have all of these callings to help run that organization, but those callings are what take you away from your family. And I thought that that's was the ultimate true goal. Too, yeah, yeah. So you're just going along, and I guess you have you have children. You have. Yeah. We ended up, my first husband and I ended up having four kids together. Oh. They're wonderful. Are they really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And questioning a little bit here and there, but staying active. Mm -hmm. and um, your, I really loved thing. going to church on Sundays. That was my thing um, because I was kind of a captive stay-at-home mom, and I'm, I'm For, more of a free week, spirit. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and I liked, liked getting out of the house. I loved being in the choir. I loved my visiting teaching, and I loved going to church on Sundays because... Um, I could ask questions. Mm -hmm. I could socialize with the other sisters in the neighborhood. And we lived in a very tight-knit neighborhood in Eagle Mountain. Okay. Where um, 94 homes in the neighborhood and all of us, but maybe four families were LDS. Yeah. yeah. And even they would come to church, you know. <laughs> um, but I never really liked the gospel doctrine class because I felt like it was too over my head. Well, looking back on it now, it wasn't too over my head. It was because it was triggering too many questions in my mind. And so I'd always go to the gospel. Just, and you just want to ask questions, and you knew that was... Right. 
why. They didn't want to hear. Exactly. <laughs> so I, we, I would go to the gospel principles class. My my husband and I that's liked going basic, to that one, and that's the basic the one basic that the converts one. or yeah. or the um, less active members would go to. Yeah. And I really liked that one um, just because they focused it more on Christ and kept it basic. And um, even then, every time I'd raise my hand, my husband at the time would lean over like, "What's the question this time?" Or <laughs> no. I'd get the elbow or sh. I'll, we'll talk at home. I was constantly shushed, constantly oh, shushed. Interesting. Well, so what happens? You you get divorced then, and mm -hmm. you say, and and that yeah, so, was that anything to do with the church at all at that point? It was such a muddled mess at the time. Um, so for a good decade, I was just your typical perfect little Molly Mormon. I even went to the church every week for a while. Until the I started, to, oh yes, to the, the temple, temple yeah, and right. um, until I started having more children, and then it would become a monthly, and then a much yeah. less frequently thing. Um, but then I, as I started having more questions. I was really trying to attain that burning in the bosom testimony, and I was so studying like crazy <laughs> the Book of Mormon, wondering why on earth I'm not, I'm not getting this. And then I came across a scripture. Um, it was, I think, it was the Nephi. Um, but it was where he was talking about one God. And then I remember reading in, um, is it Mosiah 818? Yeah, there's a Mormon 818. Mormon 818, think, yeah. God's Same thing. unchanging. God's unchanging, one God, yeah. God, just no plurality yeah. there. And I remember um, talking to my first husband about it then, saying, okay, this what's, doesn't what's jive with deal? me. Because the Book of Mormon is absolutely the most perfect thing on this earth, <laughs> right. according to what we were always taught. Right. So why does this contradict with what's in the Doctrine and Covenants and with what we're taught in the Book of Abraham and with what we're taught in the Temple about us being able to attain our own worlds at the end of the day if yeah. we reach our exaltation? Yeah. This doesn't make sense to Did me. Did he have an answer for that? No, he didn't. And <laughs> I kind of cornered him at, the, at that time, too. And um, he was never really a, a true blue believing Mormon. He was, he was always going out of a sense of obligation, sense of duty, really? expectations, just because oh. that's the way it is. His family and, and his family, yeah. and um, he went on his mission, albeit late, because he went. He was also in the military, and so he did all of his, his training first too. Um, but um, he he said, you know, I've, I've researched the other religions out in the world, and out of all of them, this is the least offensive one. This is the one that focuses on the family the most. That sounds good. So, <laughs> you know, it's better than all the rest. So yeah. that's that's why our family's just going to stick with it. Kind of a default kind of a kind of, position. Yeah. yeah. And so that was always disheartening to me because I was always the one trying to get to the temple and, and re really dragging him by his ears just to even come with me. And then finally he did start coming with me towards the end. Um, but then towards the end of our marriage, um, um, I think because the age difference and because of my little rebellious period at the beginning of it, he was always more of a parent figure mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> always fairly controlling and emotionally mm -hmm. abusive. And mm -hmm. and um, so towards the end, it started getting a little less disenfranchising and, and I just knew it was time to leave because I didn't want my kids to be raised with the example well, of that's okay to treat a spouse. Yeah. And he and I had been through years of marriage counseling and that just wasn't working. It wasn't helping. Right. And so during that time of tumult, I... I was turning to my savior because I didn't know who else to turn to. I felt at that time that I had um, I had no other solid rock. I didn't know who else to believe because I felt like I didn't my want to trust man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't trust my first husband because of how he was treating me. Um, I didn't trust the bishop at the time anymore because I'd already gone to him saying I don't feel safe at home, and the bishop would say, "Well, go home and pray about it and see what oh, you're doing wrong. Yeah. That's making him treat you that way." Wow. You know, if you've got an abused wife or an abused anybody, going to a, a leadership position, there was someone in a leadership position saying, I'm scared. I don't want to go home by myself. I need help. I need help. <laughs> yeah. Where do I go? And then they just say, go home and pray about it and see what you're doing wrong. I felt so... What you're doing wrong. Right. Exactly. I, so, I felt so violated. And so I knew I didn't trust anybody, anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew because of how my mom and dad taught me that no matter what, at the end of the day, I could always trust Jesus. And so that's what I did. I started... You started studying. Studying. Too, yeah, yeah, I was always reading the scriptures. I was always kind of dabbling in, in other LDS desert book sources yeah. for information, right. you know. Um, but I really started studying just the Gospels. I started in Matthew and then in Mark. And then um, 
I was in the middle of reading the book of Luke. And at this time, my bishop in Eagle Mountain had started calling us to the office more frequently just to kind of counseling, see where we're sitting for counseling yeah. and progress check. I know the marriage is really rocky. You've already left him and kicked him out a couple of times. And, and let's work on this together, we're, you know, trying to save everything. God bless him. He was trying to do what he thought was the best. Um, but then at one point he said, well, what, what book in the scripture are you currently reading now? And I said, well, I'm in the book of Luke. <laughs> And he said, well, that's your problem. You need to be focusing on the Book of Mormon. Oh, no. And so at that, <laughs> at that time, talking about spiritual confirmations, I finally got my very first humdinger or spiritual confirmation. It was like a bolt of lightning going right through my head of the Spirit testifying to me. He doesn't. That this man is not <laughs> speaking for the Lord. That He is not a man of God. And it took my breath away. I, and I remember looking at him and feeling that inside and just, and just realizing that I've been absolutely deceived. And I, I remember looking at him and saying, you're not a man of God. You and I, I did. And I ended up just after exchanging a few more words saying, I'm going to leave. I need to leave now. And I remember leaving that bishop's interview. And I never went back for another one. Is that right? I never did. And poor guy, he kept calling me quite frequently just to follow up with me. And then, and then shortly after that is when I, when I left my ex-husband for the last time oh. and finally moved out. Um, but so that gave me the courage and the strength. Being critical of being, studying Luke, huh? Yeah, studying yes. Luke. But yeah. after I got done reading Luke, it was finally reading the book of John. And that's what solidified um, my confirmation in my heart. That, and that's that where something I something was, was wrong with the church. Did you sense then that it was? That wasn't so much more of a critical on a bad look. foundation, or what? what no, what at that point, I was focusing more on just trying to find the truth. And I, I remember praying to God, saying, "Just show me the truth. I don't want any other junk in my life right now. Just show me your truth." Wow. And so that's why I focused on the Gospels, and I started reading the Book of John, and that's when my heart was converted. Wow. You almost have to get to that point where you're willing to be taught, right? Oh, yeah. And, I was willing. And, and go to God and say, because I think a lot of Mormons have such a pride in mm -hmm. their own situation and what they're doing, the temple and all that stuff we talked about. Absolutely. That they really don't come to that, God teach me, I, I'm, yeah. I'm yours. I was absolutely broken. I was at the lowest of the low. I was, mm -hmm. I was facing leaving an eternal family and being damned into the pits of hell should I <laughs> should I leave and, and face excommunication for the questions that I've had thus far you know yeah. so God God showed me his berry path and I liked his berries a lot better um, wow. good for you and then at that point um, I really wanted to start studying um, more about about the church because I was at the time I, I that's when I my heart started converting um, towards following Christ However, I was raised with the Book of Mormon. I was raised with that sure. culture. That's all I had known, and right. I was terrified to leave it. Yeah. So that's when a little switch in my head just started going off saying, well, I want to prove it right. Prove the church right. Prove the church right. And so then you really started And so that's studying. when I really started digging. That's when I started looking at the church history. That's when I started looking at um, the Journal of Discourses. I started reading earlier versions of the Book of Mormon wow. because I was trying to prove it right because that's all I had known. That was my last little straw. It has to be right. It has to be right because so many thousands and millions of people out there convert to this church and it's the only true gospel out there. I want to be a part of that. Now, did you feel at this point then you'd been born again as far as your relationship with Jesus? Yes. What I think for me, what it was, was just the beginning of the opening of the door. Okay. Because I was asking him to show me his truth in reading the Gospels, yeah. and he did. But then my stubborn humanness <laughs> kicks in and says, but wait, but wait, let me hold on to this. Yeah. I really like this because this is all this I've is known. All this is my I'm comfort here. zone. Yeah. And that's why I went back to start studying again. So was there another pivotal moment that you said, okay, I've learned so much now I can't deny the negative? Did you have that moment? Or? Yeah, I did. Um, Studying only church, church sources of materials, um, I, I pretty much studied myself out of the church. <laughs> reading the church history, reading the Journal of Discourses, reading um, you, you Brigham Young's. You one or two things that were really significant? Uh, for, for my wife, it was Joseph Smith's boast in the history of the church. Oh, that was gross. Yeah, yeah I wasn't too fond of that one. Um, no, I think the biggest one for me was 
seeing historically his pattern of behavior, Joseph Smith, Joseph Smith, and how can oh, people, how how our generation of LDS people are we're con are constantly um, boasting him up, but looking at his behavior pattern and of womanizing that. and excusing yeah. it, and then changing yeah. doctrines that he used to disagree with, yeah. to now say that polygamy is okay, yeah. and the way that he treated Emma and put her in that position, it is shocking, and then. So the the other histories of wives and concubines of his where yeah. their husbands were out in the mission field being yeah. sent out by Joseph yeah. to go preach the gospel. You Believe know, it or not, like we're that. running out of time. Oh, but well, I did there you want go. you to tell me uh, your first time going to a Christian church. Oh, my first time going uh, to a Christian church. Because oh, my I heavens. relate so closely. I relate so well to this. Oh, my goodness. So it, the first time I went in, I saw, oh, it's going to make me cry. <laughs> Because at this point, I'd been fully converted. I hadn't even touched any anti-Mormon stuff yet. That wasn't um, church-related material, but I felt like I was home. When you went to church? Yeah. It was such mm -hmm. a wonderful homecoming. People were coming up to me, introducing themselves to me. Yeah. And... Um, what did you think of the service and the... The service the, was wonderful because it was the all... Words? The worship, the music, it was all glorifying God, and there was celebration, and people were clapping their hands. <laughs> And then the pastor went up and taught out of the Bible. Yes, no, he yes, taught out of the Bible. Yeah, I'd never seen that in my life. Yeah, and that he stuck with the Bible, and they they all do stick with the Bible. And you know how many other Christian de denominations? Yeah. that's why we're all one body of Christ is because we're all teaching the same thing about Jesus. So you go home and I just went home and sobbed. Sobbed in gratitude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I know the family, it's been tough on the family. You, your family is still very much praying that you'll come back. And Yeah, my mom and my stepdad very much hold out the hopes and the prayers that I'll return what one day. What would you and, say to them at this point? Um, my brother and his wife also, don't. they don't talk to me anymore. They've oh. disassociated themselves completely from me. Um, at this point, it's, it's what I tell anybody else. Um, you need to have a relationship with Christ, and the only way to do that is to seek Him yeah. and to ask Him to show you His truth and to read His Gospels. Yeah. And I just leave it at that. His yeah, words will do all the converting. It's not up to me. I'm yeah. just His tool. It's really all about Jesus. It is. It is. Have you ever heard the phrase, well, that's all the Christians have is Jesus? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that <laughs> is. What, what more is there? No, I mean, what, that is. What more do you want? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Lena, thanks so much for sharing your a delightful young lady. You're a registered nurse now. I right? am, yeah. A third career. Third you said. career. Yeah. Got it right this time. Yeah. And, and you're married to a good husband. I am. So loves you. Yeah, very good, kind hearted Christian dude. I'm so happy Love him. for you. And well, thank you. Proud of you. And thank you. Yeah, it's just, it's tough. I know family, family wants us to be otherwise, but we just can't put the genie back in the bottle, can we? No, we can't. Yeah. We can't. All I can do thanks. is just love and be an example. Thanks for coming. See you next time. Bye.